What's the deal with airplane food? And also every single other thing about being on an airplane. Seriously, airplanes seem to be a place of absolute lawless chaos. Bizarre freakouts. And sometimes federal crimes. Ooh. So today we're going to be reacting to some of the most insane, crazy, and even criminal moments captured mid-flight. Oh, that's a hawk. Yeah, what is that? I don't know what it it's was. It's not an airplane. <laughs> better, better, better. Better, better, yeah. better. What's that? <laughs> Oh man, let's go on to our first clip here, all right? Some gonna... of you understand me though, you guys get me. This guy treated the overhead bin like his personal escape room and the plane was his puzzle to solve. What you're doing is wrong. This guy put your luggage up there. His luggage up here now, you don't have any space. Yeah, I got you. You have no space, he put his luggage up here, look. He's like the overhead bin yeah. police. So he's clearly like a, you know, like a backseat driver, you know, like yes. telling you like, oh, I like hate make those. a left here, make a right there, oh, or slow down. Those. Yeah, everyone hates a backseat driver. My so. mother, who I love, is the worst backseat wow. driver. I love her. Yeah, I hope you. Terrible he, backseat driver. I hope she doesn't watch this. She watches every week. Oh gosh. And you uh, should too. <laughs> yeah. You know, clearly this, this guy is pretty annoying because he's telling, you know, he's telling everyone what we already know. Like the luggage is full. Like someone did it. Okay, what, go to you want to go bin. start a fight with the person up there? Right. Like, exactly. What, you're not benefiting, you're not helping anyone. No, don't no, point it. Don't point your finger at it. Ooh. You point your finger at it one more time. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to tell it to stop. We'll call the police? I, I don't know about you, but like, <laughs> do you get do you get service on the airplane? I mean, I know I don't know if they're like mid-flight. I know they're boarding, but like even even when I'm boarding, I don't get like any bars. It's just at LEX. Yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. like they blocked it with some FBI like <laughs> yeah. cell phone blocking system, but even sitting at the gate, I get no service. Yeah. Hello, 911. I'm on the uh, Delta uh, Flight 732. Uh, I need you to come here immediately. Like that's because not he pointed his <laughs> finger at me. No, you point the you're watching. Okay, sir, that's okay. That's okay. He's he saw really... his way right off the plane. Oh. Oh. I guess he, he got kicked off the plane. Well, first of all, trying to call the police because someone pointed a finger at you. I mean, you're not, that's not a case. That's certainly not one that the cops are gonna come out for. The, <laughs> the, the attendant didn't even touch him. So, didn't touch him um, and there's nothing, you know, threatening about a finger point. Right, he didn't point him in a way like, I'm gonna yeah. stab you with my index, <laughs> Michael, like well, I wanted to do so here. many times. That never happened. Yeah. I've done worse on the freeway <laughs> with a different finger. Um, <laughs> Also not a crime. Um, <laughs> also not a freedom of speech. <laughs> yeah. As far as this passenger being kicked off the plane, now that's something the airplane does have the right to do. Absolutely. If you're causing any type of disturbance, yeah. uh, they can kick you off the plane. And clearly this guy was pissing off the wrong person. You know? Yeah, 100%. Don't pick a fight with the people that have the power to remove you. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Imagine what this guy would have done if they tried to gate check his bag. Oh my God, he probably would have called the FBI or something. <laughs> National security issue. It's probably a good thing they removed him from the playing because he probably was going to cause even more disturbances, to be honest. And I don't even know why he should work for the airline. He should be like, <laughs> the, he clearly loves to conduct. Maybe he's good at conduct. Jenga or something, I don't know, or, or Tetris, Tetris. Oh, Tetris, yeah, yeah, yeah. where things go. Yeah, ah, yeah. good go. 90s reference that <laughs> none of the audience will understand. <laughs> now, Ugo, as a passenger, do you have a legal right to the amount of bin space above you? Okay, now, I, I travel a lot. I travel a lot. a lot, a lot. And I do personally hate it when someone puts their luggage in my, like, Section, but you don't have a legal right to the bin space above your seat. That's absolutely right. I mean, the only thing you have to save yourself in this situation is if a flight attendant uh, decides to say something or if the airline has certain rules about what you know can be put up there. Right. But for the most part, none of them do. Exactly. So consequently, this guy is just out of luck. Out of luck. Have you ever met a guy like this before? No, I hope not to either. Oh gosh, I have. Who? I used to know a guy like this. Who? Very. Don't say their name. <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the to the next one before Ugo gets in some real legal trouble. Um, Good morning again. Yeah, this was an Oceana Airlines plane with 194 people on board. And let's go ahead and go no. right to the video now because it's just unbelievable. Because police there in South Korea say a 33-year-old passenger opened the emergency what? exit door about 850 Jeez. feet above ground. No. Right after the pilot made that routine announcement that the plane was about to land. What? No. Now, once the plane landed safely, 12 people were taken to the hospital what? for respiratory issues. Oh my now, gosh. The passenger was arrested, of course, and if convicted, he could face up to 10 years. 10 years? If convicted? That's 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 one of my worst fears. I oh yeah, I mean, can you imagine, like, what are you doing opening up mid-flight? And think about the people that were sitting in that, like, bulkhead. Like, yeah. they're like, yeah, we got the premium seats. Yeah, yeah, right, get the like, extra <laughs> leg room. leg room. No. <laughs> they didn't realize how much leg room they really had. Yeah, the air conditioning really hit them hard. <laughs> it really did. They're like, I need, <laughs> turn that vent on. <laughs> 
Exactly. Um, okay, so my next question, what happened to the guy? Like he opened it? How did he not get sucked out of the plane? I know, I was just thinking that too, but he must have, uh, yeah, I mean, he opened it and then maybe he flew back. I don't know, I, I'm not I'm not a, uh, I don't do physics. <laughs> 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 to be honest, these people are keeping their cool way more than I would in this situation. I'd be freaking out. I constantly make sure that my seatbelt is tight. Yeah. Like, I, I may not be able to have children in the future. It is <laughs> tight. <laughs> you know, there's a lot that we can say legally about this video. For example, could the man who opened the door be charged with attempted murder or even terrorism? Well, that's a good point. It all comes down to intent. Apparently, the man told the police that he felt suffocated and tried to get off the plane quickly. Now, if that is truly what his intent was, then it's unlikely he'd be charged with attempted murder or terrorism. Uh, but again, we don't know all the facts here. We'll have to see what type of case is built against him. Saying that you felt suffocated and tried to get off the plane doesn't excuse you from putting the entire flight in danger. When we're talking about attempted murder, we're talking about terrorism. Those are very specific crimes. And just like Mike said, they require specific intent. But there are other different laws that this individual violates. Absolutely. I mean, this man was arrested and is facing 10 years in prison for violating aviation security law. Clearly what he did made the entire plane unsafe. And there are several laws against that. Absolutely. And not only that, Mike, but we're talking about criminal law. This person could also be held civilly liable oh, yeah. as well. Not only were, I believe, up to 12 people injured by what happened, but in addition to that, they're gonna cause a whole bunch of grief to everyone who's on board. Oh yeah, I mean, the, the people who had to go into the hospital, um, that's pain and suffering. Absolutely. They, uh, they're gonna, you know, potentially be able to sue uh, this man and even possibly the airline. This is all gonna have to be analyzed by a lawyer and it brings me to a good point. If you ever have something that needs to be analyzed by a lawyer, we happen to know some pretty good lawyers that know a thing or two about a thing or two. And you can do that by visiting what? I think I have a case.com. Link in the description. All right, listen, after what we've seen thus far, who knows what's happening next, but well, let's watch it together. The third airplane video, folks. There is uproar today after oh an out of control passenger accused of groping the flight attendants was duct taped to his seat and the oh airline suspended God. the flight crew. At first, Frontier Airlines suspended the crew, saying in a statement, unfortunately, the proper policies for restraining a passenger were not followed. As a result, the flight attendants involved have been suspended pending further investigation. Yeah, so we have a case where this passenger is groping the flight attendants mm -hmm. and the flight attendants have decided to restrain this passenger. Yeah. But it appears that the reason why they are in some legal hot water is the way that they attempted to restrain this passenger. Absolutely, yeah. If this passenger is causing a disturbance, flight attendants can restrain passengers. The issue that I'm seeing with it is the tape over the mouth. mouth. Yeah. Yes. Um, there's nothing indicated from what we're seeing is that the passenger was trying to bite people or or, or do anything with his mouth. They're, they're basically duct taping the mouth because he's making noises. Yeah, he's, um, he's yelling help. And I presume that is the reason why they're duct taping his mouth, but that's not a legally justifiable reason. And then you have- And he's already restrained. And, and right. the, the other concern also becomes when you duct tape someone's face, if they have breathing issues or something, yes. that could get the, the air, that airline. That would be me, Mike. Like right. I cannot, I am a mouth breather. Yeah. I am a mouth breather for sure. <laughs> God. But if someone duct taped my mouth, I would honestly think that I'm gonna die. Yeah, and I mean, that's the concern here is like the flight attendants don't know this person's medical history, if they have asthma or whatever. Yes. And if Which you're I duct taping have. their mouth, there's a potential that, you know, you, you could harm them. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, they already restrained his body. Exactly. So, so he's no longer posing a threat to the flight attendants or to his fellow passengers. So consequently, it appears to go a step too far. But undoubtedly, let's not ignore the fact that this passenger did did something that's 100% yes. illegal, Crime. unlawful. Yeah. You cannot do that. You cannot grope a flight attendant. That's you sexual cannot, assault. 100%. Yeah. The reason why he was restrained was justified. It's just how they went about doing it is what caused them some problems. We're now learning more about the 22-year-old suspect identified as Maxwell Barry. Here he is with his proud parents when he chose to attend Ohio Wesleyan University on a golf scholarship. My parents are what is he saying? All right, already, already I'm thinking uh, this person is clearly intoxicated. Oh, oh, <laughs> that too also. You know, you can tell he's clearly a disturbance on the plane. Oh, he's uh, definitely a um, disturbance. I mean, who just goes around and starts shouting, my parents are worth $2 million. Yeah, there's something going my on My grandfather is worth more than this plane. By the way, planes are hundreds of millions of dollars. So maybe-, maybe That's an expensive grandfather. I'm telling you right now. I'm sure your grandfather is very disappointed in your yeah. behavior. 
that's true. You're grounded. Um, <laughs> right. Passenger Alfredo Rivera shot else. this video. Shut the so it seems like the flight attendants were trying to resolve the situation calmly, but they had no choice. He kept screaming, cursing. In my opinion, they did an, a, a very good job. Oh, oh okay. okay. Oh. Counts of battery. Ooh. Now he just, now he's hitting. Yeah, he's he took a swing at this, either the flight attendant or some sort of staff that's on the plane. If there was contact, it's battery. If there wasn't contact, it is assault. Clearly he's committing crimes. Yeah, he's I mean, gone it, beyond the sexual assault now. You know, if he's throwing punches, that that is a, a, a cause to restrain someone because Absolutely. He's, he's violent. On Absolutely. The plane. Which requires restraint, especially yeah. when you are on an airplane. Because remember, when you're in the air like that, you're now under federal aviation laws, which are very strict when it comes to your conduct in the air. Beyond the groping, him throwing punches is, is actually also showing violence and the propensity to create more violence on the plane. Absolutely. Uh, so, they, so the flight attendants here, I believe, uh, were in the right for restraining. Again, it all comes down to did they need to restrain him in that way? Did they need right. to cover his mouth? Uh, right. Was it overboard? If we're being completely honest, there was no need to cover the mouth. In fact, it's actionable by doing so. But was there a need for restraint? Absolutely, there was a need for restraint. I mean, once you start throwing blows, you have to be mm -hmm. restrained. All right, we talked a lot about what this individual could be charged with, sexual assault, mm -hmm. battery for uh, throwing the punches. Absolutely. Um, but what about the flight attendants? Uh, what sort mm -hmm. of crimes could they be charged? The most important thing to remember is that flight attendants do have the ability to apply a certain amount of force when it comes to passengers that are on board breaking the law. So they do have the ability to detain a passenger. They also have the ability to ensure that the other passengers that are on board are safe. And if they have to use force to make sure that the other passengers are safe, they are able to do so. Covering the mouth may have gone overboard, but I believe that this is something that will be more of a civil liability as opposed to a criminal liability yeah. because they were trying to essentially enforce aviation law. All right, well, enough about Frontier Airlines. Let's look at our next clip. It is the air travel dispute that's got everyone talking. If your seat reclines, do you need to ask permission of the person behind you? Oh. Here, the woman whose video sparked the debate is speaking with Inside Edition, and it turns out the situation was even more bizarre than the initial video indicated. Just before we get into this video, the age-old debate, to recline or not to recline? Right. What do you think, Hugo? Well, I am a big believer in the recline because the fact is the button is there and if the button is there, why should we not be able to use it? I agree. If the button is there, you should be able to recline. Now, there may be some exceptions. Maybe uh, when people are eating, you shouldn't recline at that time. If there's turbulence, you know, there may be certain reasons like not to do it. Right. But for the most part, you purchase the seat. It has the ability to recline. If the airlines don't want you reclining, then take away that ability. But if you do, we will not fly with you. 100%, I'm done with you. The first airline that removes all the reclining ability is the first airline that I will not be traveling on. I will on. not even touch that airline. Goodbye. Yeah, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> all right, let's get back to the video. The woman whose seat was turned into a- Oh, oh look at him. Gosh. Is he punching it? Unbelievable. He's like, that's so annoying. Unbelievable. That's so annoying. Who would do something like that? Why would anyone do you that? You just want to be well, a jerk? How did this start? The man behind me asked me to not recline it while he ate. And so I left my seat unreclined for a good 10 minutes. She yeah. did not recline it for, mm -hmm. for 10 minutes because yeah. the person said he needed to eat something. Which to me is reasonable. If someone says that they want to eat, uh, it's a reasonable time to not recline. It's a reasonable seat. request. I don't know, 10 minutes is pretty fast. Mm -hmm. I, I think she could have waited maybe 20, but uh, honestly, the ideal situation would have been to say, are you finished with your food yet? Right. Uh, but, but let's continue watching and see what happens. When he was done with his meal. She says she reclined the seat again. Okay, so then, the then she table, reclined. If you listen closely, you can hear him asking her what's and he gets the problem. He gets very upset. Williams says she summoned a flight attendant hoping to de-escalate the situation. She was even issued this oh. passenger disturbance notice that reads, you should immediately cease if you wish to avoid prosecution and your removal from this so aircraft. So it looks like the airlines uh, have a notice that they give to passengers when they cause a disturbance on the airline. And as we've mentioned in this video, causing a disturbance on the airline is a federal crime. Absolutely. You, you can get charged with that. My assumption of why they have a document like this is to help build the case 
against you. They're going to yes. say, hey, look, you're on warning. Yes. Here's your first warning. Mm -hmm. Now, if you continue to do it, you are showing that you have the intent to keep doing it and you're yes. fully aware of what you're doing. Yeah. And that makes it much easier to convict someone. It's a slam dunk case at that point. Yeah, you're right. Here's the thing. Undoubtedly, this disturbance notice went to the wrong person because, ladies and gentlemen, keep in mind that if you are banging the seat in front of you, that is actually battery. Remember, battery is any type of non-consensual or offensive contact that it doesn't always have to be physical contact with your person. It can be anything that you are actually attached to, like a seat, for example. And him banging the seat and punching the seat is committing battery, and he's committing battery on a plane, which is another federal offense. Something must have gotten mixed up. I feel like the flight attendant probably was unaware of what this man was doing, because really this uh, disturbance notice should have been given to that man, right. uh, but it was not. Unfortunately, I guess she was uh, deemed the one causing the trouble on the airplane. Unbelievable, and keep in mind, she says that the flight attendant basically told her that she can get kicked off the plane. They're mid-flight, which means the only way for her to be kicked off the plane is to have an emergency landing. And if they actually landed this plane because of her, they are citing her as being the disturbance, that airline gets opened up to any type of civil liability, not only from this passenger who's being wrongfully accused, but also from any of the other passengers who are now delayed, they missed their flight or they missed their event because of this emergency landing. This is interesting. Let's continue to watch and see. She said, I'm not dealing with you anymore. Handed me that and threatened to have me escorted off the plane. We asked Inside Edition Instagram followers what they thought. 71% were on her side. 29% supported the dude. So kind of like what we've said, slightly over 70% of people agree you should be able to recline the seat. The rest don't, obviously. But I think the majority of people will agree that, you know, they put the buttons on there for a reason. You should be able to recline. This lady was in the right to recline. Mm -hmm. She tried to be courteous by letting him eat his food before doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this man responded with very uncourteous behavior. Right. right, and illegal behavior on top of that. You're absolutely right. I mean, to be honest, when we're talking about the legality of the entire situation, she purchased her ticket. And when you purchase your ticket, you're able to do what you reasonably would be allowed to do on that flight. And as you mentioned, because everyone knows that these chairs do recline, you have that expectation of being able to recline your seat. So she has a right to do what she is legally entitled to do when she bought her ticket, which is recline her seat. For those those that talk about the reasonableness of being able to recline your seat, that is, was she reasonable for reclining her seat? Those of you that are in the 29% might say, hey, listen, he couldn't recline his seat, so therefore it's unreasonable that she should be able to recline her seat. But if you really go by that strategy, it becomes a domino effect. Once one row is not able to recline their seat, and therefore it's unreasonable for the row in front of them to recline the, their seat, it becomes a domino effect all the way to the front of the aircraft. So Obviously, it is considered to be reasonable to be able to recline your seat because that is what they were designed to do. And she was not doing anything out of the ordinary to then have her conduct be deemed unreasonable. And how would you respond if someone tells you behind you, hey, listen, don't recline your seat. Are you the kind of person that would just be like, okay, and then what would you do actually? I'm really curious. It all depends, depends on okay, the situation. Okay, I'm sitting behind you. If you're behind me, I am definitely reclining. <laughs> That's end of that. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're an evil uh, human being. All right, let's move on to the next clip. You know what? I might now be in the 29%. <laughs> oh, what in the world okay. is this? This woman is, is in a carry-on bin. No. Is this like a, a... This cannot be real. A woman was spotted lying down inside an overhead bin, curled up next to a suitcase. It's not clear what happened to the passenger, what? why she decided no. to climb into the, sp the bin. Also, did anyone see her climbing up there and try to stop her? I gotta say, it's probably more comfortable than the chair, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, with the pillow there, it could be quite comfortable. I mean, you get to stretch your legs oh out. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, I'm not blaming her for doing it. Uh, I guess we don't... First of all, kudos to her because it, it takes aerobics and, and acrobatics. Yeah. To, to, I can barely get my luggage it's up impressive. there. It's impressive. Let alone my whole body. It's impressive. I wonder if this was done for social media, if this was done because uh, some weirdness, who knows? Her um, and that other guy from the first video, yeah. would they would not get along. Oh, no, no. This is clearly <laughs> a potential hazard. <laughs> um, potential hazard. So it wouldn't surprise me if the airline got very upset about this and made her uh, deboard the plane. Yeah, I, if, if I were the airline police, I think I would be very upset.
event. It could potentially fall and cause a true injury to several passengers. It could damage the plane. It could it could yes. you potentially fall on passenger. <laughs> it's just not safe, people. Please don't do this and don't do it for likes or views either if that's what this person is doing. So apparently the flight attendant did find her there before the flight took off and she got kicked off the plane for this and that doesn't surprise me at all. <laughs> right. I gotta be honest. honest. <laughs> Let's be honest. There's only one way this is gonna end. Yeah, you can't do this. Uh, Come on. <laughs> so don't try it. Uh, you're causing a disturbance before the flight even takes off. And keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, when you are on an airplane, that is when federal law applies. It doesn't have to be until you get into air. Aviation is controlled by federal law. Therefore, a federal offense could land you in prison, ladies and gentlemen. It's not worth it. You can get into big time trouble by goofing off on an airplane, yeah. even if the airplane's on the ground. So remember, next time you take a flight, maybe just stay in your seat and try to keep to yourself for a while. Put on a podcast, watch a cheesy rom-com, eat some pretzels, take a nap. Ladies and gentlemen, just in case some other people are not taking that advice, maybe bring an extra roll of duct tape so the flight attendants don't have to. <laughs> Please don't do that. Thanks for watching. <laughs>